Welcome to a presentation on William Blackstone and the settlement of Pawtucket, Rhode Island. My name is Dr. David Weed, coordinator of the Soames Heritage Area Project, and I'll be your host for this presentation. The Poconocut people had successfully occupied the New England region for at least 10,000 years before Europeans began arriving. The Pawtucket region along the Blackstone River was said to have been one of the most populous places in New England prior to the arrival of European settlers. Native Americans would gather there to take advantage of the salmon and smaller fish which were found at the falls. Their clans occupied Somes, or the southern area of what is today all of East Bay, Rhode Island, and nearby Massachusetts, that was known to have a more favorable climate than the rest of New England. The southern area of New England was the most populated, with over 100,000 people living here when trading with Europeans began. The first permanent settlement in New England was achieved in late 1620 by a group of English separatists who planned to establish a colony that was free of the restrictions imposed by King Charles I. Of the 102 who made the voyage, only 52 survived until the following year. While not an economically successful venture at first, the Plymouth Colony did establish an English foothold in New England and was soon followed by other colonial settlements. Thomas Weston, a London merchant, had helped to finance the pilgrims and pay for the Mayflower because he believed that there was a potential for a lucrative business base on trade with the colonies. Since the pilgrims were motivated more by religious freedom than investment opportunities, Weston wanted to establish a separate colony that would serve as a trading post from which lumber, furs, and salted fish could be shipped to England. Accordingly, in 1622, Weston sent 60 men to what is now North Weymouth and named it Wessaguscus or Wessagusset. Six months later, Robert George, a captain in the British Navy, attained a grant and brought approximately 120 men and women from Weymouth, England, to the Wessagusset colony. The venture was short-lived, and following a thwarted Indian attack, George and some of the settlers returned to England in 1624, but others remained in the colony that they named Weymouth. One of the ministers in the Georges expedition was the Reverend William Blackston, also spelled Blackstone. Blackston was born in 1595 in Gibside, Wickenham, Dunham County, England, and grew up in affluent circumstances. The son of a minister, he was admitted to Emmanuel College, Cambridge in 1614 and received a master's degree in 1621. He then became an Anglican priest in 1619, although he had several disagreements with the church. This led to his decision to join the failed George expedition to America in 1623. Unhappy with the inflexible Anglican church of the time, he joined the George Exposition in 1623, but left the settlement the following year. His father, Sir William Blackston, built Gibside Hall, a spacious mansion between 1603 and 1620. Blackstone chose to remain and move northwest to what was then called the Shawmut Peninsula, what we now know as Boston, with friends Thomas Walford, who went to present-day Charleston, and Samuel Maverick, who went to present-day Chelsea. Blackstone built his home on the west slope of Beacon Hill, where he stored the books he bought, approximately 186 in various languages, planted English roses, raised animals, and cultivated animals. According to author Reverend George Tilton, he remained in quiet possession of his Shawmut estate until the arrival of Governor Winthrop and his company in 1630. The Puritans had landed in nearby Charleston in 1629, but they had problems finding potable water, so Blackston invited them to settle on his land in Boston in 1630. They then granted him 50 acres, but he sold it back to them in 1634, 
and this land now makes up Boston Common, a central public park in downtown Boston. Winthrop allowed Blackstone to sell 44 of his 50 acres, taking the rest and each shaman inhabitant paid Blackstone six pence or more. He decided to leave for Rhode Island, either alone or with his servants in 1634, taking his tools, clothing, seeds, cuttings, cattle, and his precious books. He used the profit to stock up on animals for his journey around 45 miles to what is now Cumberland, Rhode Island. Blackstone rode his white bull upon which it is said he often traveled while reading his books and traveled to an area above Pawtucket Falls. He built a house on what is called Study Hill in what today is known as the Lonsdale section of Cumberland, Rhode Island, possibly like the Stone Ender, and established his kitchen garden, planted his yellow sweeting apple trees, and raised his roses. He cultivated the first unique variety of American apples, the yellow sweeting now known as the Rhode Island greening apple. While none of his settlement remains today, it is possible to construct its layout from early descriptions. In the diagram on the left, one can see the location of his house, well, and orchard established near a bend in the river. Also known is the original location of his grave, which has since been removed. Study Hill was about a mile north of the Pawtucket Falls in Cumberland, Rhode Island, about three miles from Pawtucket, a mile and a half above Valley Falls, and near where the mill of the Lonsdale Company now stands. Its Indian name was Wawipun Sag. The exact spot is now under an Ann and Hope store. In that early day, that location must have afforded a fine view of the winding river and its picturesque scenery. Two years after Blackstone settled on the river, Roger Williams arrived to settle a few miles downstream on the river in a tidal portion known as Omega Pond on the Seekonk River. Roger Williams and Blackstone disagreed on many theological matters, but they remained lifelong friends. Williams frequently invited him to preach in Providence and he also preached at other churches throughout Rhode Island. Blackstone married widow Sarah Fisher Stevenson in Boston on July 4, 1659, at the age of 64. They had a son named John, and Sarah died in June of 1673 at the age of 48, and Blackstone died in May 1675 at the age of 80, leaving substantial holdings in real estate. The King Philip War broke out in June, a month after he died, and Study Hall was burned to the ground with all of Blackstone's books and journals. All but a few buildings in Providence were also burned to the ground, despite the good relationship that both Blackstone and Williams had with the local tribes over the years. At least 160 others moved into the area while Blackstone was there, including Joseph Jenks, who came to America in 1645 and resided with his father in Lynn, Massachusetts. About the year 1655, he removed to Pawtucket, engaged in the iron manufacture. Jenks purchased about 60 acres near Pawtucket Falls in 1671 and established a sawmill and forge which were soon burned in the King Philip War. The Jenks Forge was rebuilt when the war ended, and soon there was a small village clustered near the Pawtucket Falls that included several stone-ended dwellings, the forge, the foundry, a gristmill, and sawmill. Jenks was a sword maker, blacksmith, mechanic, and inventor who was instrumental in establishing the Saugus Ironworks in Mass Bay Colony, when he was granted the first machine patent in America. Other settlers followed Jenks, and by 1775, the area was home to manufacturers of muskets, linseed oil, potash, and shipbuilding. Also around this time, Ozile Wilkinson and his family set up an iron forge, making anchors, nails, screws, farm implements, and even cannons. 
1665, the first members of the Wilkinson family arrived in Rhode Island. Lawrence Wilkinson of Lancaster, England, immigrated to New England and settled in Providence in 1657. The younger members of the Wilkinson family moved to Cumberland and Smithfield, Rhode Island. Descendants Ozile Wilkinson's son, David, crossed paths with a young Samuel Slater in 1790 and became one of Slater's most valuable assistants. The legacy of the Wilkinson family is still felt on the property of Old Slater Mill National Historic Landmark. The Daggett House is the oldest standing house in Pawtucket and one of the oldest surviving buildings in the state. The large farmhouse was built around 1685 for John Daggett, Jr., near the previous site of his father's house. The father's house is said to have been destroyed during King Philip's War. The large farmhouse was built around 1685 for John Daggett, Jr., near the previous site of his father's house. In 1687, 26-year-old Nathaniel Daggett of Rehoboth, present-day East Providence, married neighbor Rebecca Miller. At some point, he bought a large parcel of land near the Seekonk and Ten Mile Rivers and built the two-room house for his wife and five children who, sur who survived infancy. The house stayed in the family for about 200 years. The Nathaniel Daggett House sits 300 yards from the spot where Roger Williams first settled after he was banished from Salem in 1636 for his radical views. After just a few months, Williams was told he was in Plymouth Colony territory and had to move. He and his family crossed the Seekonk River, where he was greeted by Narragansett Chief Canonicus and offered the land on which he started Providence. While there, he and William Blackstone became good friends. <laughs>